Hey everyone, Ken the Noun here, and how about we watch a death battle, Dante vs. Bayonetta. Of course, as always, there's the link to the original video in the description, if you haven't seen it, watch it, because if you haven't, why are you here and how did you get here? <laughs> so yeah. As of usual, well, I guess since we're now back for season 3, yeah. As per usual of these, of course, gonna say what I think about both characters. I don't have much experience with Dante, I have never played a Devil May Cry game, I'm considering picking them up eventually because, uh, because, well, I play Bayonetta, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, so, to me, the closest experience I have with Dante is Marvel vs. Capcom 3, so, yeah. As for Bayonetta, I play both Bayonetta games, I really like them. I played it in Smash, so there's also that. So, yeah. I would say let's just get into this, but one more thing that I'll just address. Apparently, along with this, was posted a video for something called DBX, which I just clicked on that and looked at the description. It looks like they're just rebranding one man melee, so I won't be reacting to those. Um, because, well, I did one man melee once, people didn't like it. So, understandable. So, with that, let's just get into this. This episode of Death Battle is brought to you by Angry Video Game Nerd 2 Assimilation. Pre-order on Steam right I now to save the first 10% one. and get the soundtrack free. Okay, Death Battle, welcome back. For some action heroes, it's not enough He's to just like save the world. They've got to look good doing it. Dante, oh, the devil. Oh, Bayonetta Did that come out? I remember hearing about it, but I don't know if they ever came out. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Take a walk down Slum Avenue, and you'll find all sorts of hangouts for the scum of the underworld. Slum Avenue, the bullseye bar, subtle. A random strip club, and even a run-down service shop called Devil May Cry. But the services they're selling aren't like washing your car or fixing your plumbing. Oh no! Long as you got the cash, this shop specializes in delivering demonic beatdowns. Who's crazy enough to try making a living this way, you ask? His name is Dante. From the very beginning, Dante's life was always unusual. Born from the unholy union of a human mother and a demon father, Dante and his twin brother Virgil had their first supernatural encounter at the young age of eight. Yeah, see, his demon dad was a badass who single-handedly conquered the underworld and imprisoned its demon emperor, Mundus. But after dad died, Mundus' minions felt brave enough to take some revenge by slaughtering his family, leaving Dante an orphan. Mm. Bummer. Hate it when that happens. With his mother gone and his brother assumed dead, Dante was left with only one option become the ultimate demon hunter, and perpetuate the cycle of vengeance. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Uh. <laughs> Despite the dangerous nature of his occupation, Dante always maintains a carefree spirit while dispatching devils of the underworld. It's part of his charm. Hell, okay, I've seen the gameplay, like I can see how Bayonetta, well, cocky. how that turned to Bayonetta. He's better than the mortal I can see, strong enough to grapple with the underworld's toughest demons, and straight up man enough to shake off being stabbed through the chest, like every goddamn day. That's thanks to his regenerative hmm. ability. In fact, all of that is made possible due to his demonic heritage, and made even more deadly by his weapon. His favorites being his dual does pistols not, and enormous does not seem good for Bayo. Like any proud weapon owner, he gives his tools of destruction pet names. His guns, Ebony and Ivory, specialize in long-range shots and rapid-fire barrages, respectively. These hand cannons are so powerful, they can each obliterate demons in a single shot. I think that looks suits you better. Rebellion is a large magical sword given to him by his pops, which can cut any demon down to size in the blink of an eye. He's also got his brother's sword, Yamato, which can cut through dimensions. Throughout his adventures, Dante also collected a wide assortment of additional weaponry called Devil Arms, physical manifestations of powerful demons he has defeated. Remember Mega Man? It, it's that, but on steroids. His armored hmm. Gilgamesh gauntlets increase his striking power, letting him shatter huge monoliths with a lethal one-inch punch. With Lucifer, the backpack, not the devil, Dante basically throws infinite lightsabers. 
He's also got an electric guitar, which is literally electric. Ice-powered nunchucks, grenade launchers, shotguns, and I kid you not, a briefcase that can transform into 666 different weapons, ranging from a giant Beyblade to a flying what? turret gun. Where does he possibly keep One of them was a minigun. Really, really I guess deep Ruby pockets. stole that idea. Or perhaps <laughs> it's one of his styles. Or well, it, whatever. Is also acquired from defeating demon bosses. With doppelganger style, he can duplicate himself. With trickster style, he can teleport instantly. With royal guard style, he becomes a nigh impervious dreadnought, and he can even slow down time with the quicksilver style. On the rare occasion, Dante feels he needs to get serious. Mm, slowing down time, that's so familiar. Trigger, so yeah, I can see where that came his from this series. His true <laughs> devil form. Devil trigger dramatically oh, yeah, about his now. Strength, speed, and healing power. And he can fly! Being so well armed, Dante is more than capable of handling entire hordes of demons on his own. Although this doesn't stop some of his allies from joining in from time to time. This includes Trish, a demon lady who occasionally fights alongside him, and happens to resemble his deceased mother. Talk about giving somebody an Oedipus complex. Hey, if I may quote an old family saying, if she's not directly related, she's safe to be dated. That explains a lot. Luckily, and quite surprisingly, that avenue was never explored. Thank God. Dante is a walking, talking, feet-achieving machine. One time, after getting impaled by four demons at once, he pushed one so hard it exploded and dropped a ceiling fan on the other three, all while eating a slice of pizza. Oh, and when their friends showed up, he challenged them to a game of billiards. He won. Dante has run down the side of a building so fast he caught fire, similar to a spacecraft re-entering the atmosphere at approximately 17,000 miles per hour. And he's even capable of taking out others just as overpowered as himself. Like his brother Virgil, who was not dead, but evil. He stopped a colossal punch from this titanic monster without breaking a sweat, shrugged off bombardment by meteors, and eventually avenged his mother by defeating the demon lord Mundus in space. You may be asking yourself, space. Can, can he <laughs> Yes, Dante does have a limit to how much punishment he can take, but if there's anything that could take him down, it's his own cocky attitude. In the words of the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, there is no greater danger than underestimating your opponent. I'm gonna have to disagree with old Lao Tzu here. Pretty sure there's no greater danger than telling a woman those fans do in fact make her ass look fat. You bastard! And jackpot. From the Angels of Paradiso to the Demons of Inferno, there is a name feared by both the light and the dark, and her name is Bayonetta. To any normal guy walking down the street, she may look like your average seven foot tall gargantuan Amazon woman with good fashion sense. But Bayonetta is actually one of the last Umbra witches, a clan of mystics allied with demon kind. Named Holy Sabrina crap, just yeah, I realized she I'd seven her foot seven. Damn. Due to her parents being from <laughs> Never realized she was, I mean, I knew she was tall, but not that sage, tall. And her mother, an Umbra witch. See, the sages and witches had one rule to follow. Don't make babies with the opposite clan because, according to prophecy, it would bring on the destruction of the universe. So, naturally, it was only a matter of time before somebody couldn't keep it in their pants. <sighs> Pulling out works every time, but the last time, you would know. With the pact now broken, war ensued between the two factions. In the end, only two witches survived, Cereza and her rival slash future friend, Jean. Hoping to prevent the apocalypse, Jean used a special dagger to seal away Cereza's memories and put her into a 500 year long coma. When Cereza woke up from her epic power nap, she took on her new name, Bayonetta, and set out to find her lost memories. Luckily for her, she had just the right weapon for the job, her hair. As an Umbro witch, not only does yeah. her hair serve as her clothing, which I'm having a really hard time deciding whether or not that's hot or just disgusting, she can also use it to summon yeah, the demon yeah. Madama Butterfly to aid her in battle. This technique, the Wicked Weaves, creates portals for the giant demon to deliver devastating punches and kicks. 
Bayonetta can also walk on walls and ceilings with Witch Walk, and even transform into animals to fly, run super fast, and dodge attacks. But her most useful technique is Witch Time. By slowing down time itself, Bayonetta can dodge practically anything while unleashing a barrage of attacks. Bayonetta is basically a tall, sexy armory. She wields gauntlets called Durga, which attack with fire and electricity, a huge sight that rots the souls of its victims, and a friggin' lightsaber called Pillow Talk. She has a bow that fires poison arrows, a chainsaw made of dragon scales, a massive hammer that can cause earthquakes with every strike, and even ice skates, which attack with ice, obviously. But her most beloved weapons are her four pistol set called Love is Blue. Rather than swap between them like a normal person, she somehow manages to wield all of them at once by using not only her hands, but also her feet. How does that work? Does she have, like, some kind of weird thumbs on her ankles or something? That would kind of detract from the hotness factor just a bit. Oh my god! She's covered in hair and she uses her feet like hands. She's a monkey! Monkey witch! This is awkward. Uh. I <laughs> highly doubt that. She probably just uses some sort of magic. Speaking of magic, when Bayonetta wants to unleash her full potential, she triggers her Umbran Climax. <laughs> which increases her strength and lets her summon Madama Butterfly's full unrestrained power. When fully unleashed, yeah. Madama Butterfly can shatter huge meteors by headbutting them. Ah, uh, Climax. By herself, Bayonetta has pulled off some impressive feats. She's strong enough to kick military jets into the air, headbutt skyscrapers across the city, and even throw satellites with her legs in outer space. Oh, by the way, she can survive outer space. Using which time, she was able to defeat of course she... this thing in only a matter of real-time seconds. Even without which time, her reaction speed is astronomical. For example, when a Lumen Sage stopped time to position newly fired bullets about three feet behind her, she managed to not only turn and identify the incoming threat, but also dodge all 16 of them. Considering regular bullets travel around 2,500 feet per second, she must have pulled all that off in less than one thousandth of a second. And then there's that one time when she killed mm. God. You know, by scissoring her hair with Jeans and punching the creator's soul across the entire solar system into the sun? Okay, obviously Bayonetta's feats and abilities are absolutely ridiculous, but she is sometimes rather inconsistent. Despite her reaction time, she's been caught off guard by enemies ranging from a half-god called Lobster, or something like that, and even a plant monster that managed to grab her out of the air. But regardless of whatever weaknesses she may have, Bayonetta's achieved more than anyone could possibly imagine despite being 100% human. Wait, she is human? Dibs. Alright, let's dance, baby. Huh. Alright, the combatants passing. are set. Let's send this debate once and for all. But first, we made another video game, and it sure okay, would be out, swell so. if you buy it. The nerd is back for an all new adventure. Thanks for having me the enemy. first one. Navigate I'll be a few of the levels, but eh. Fucking helicopters! Giant fucking alligators! Fast fucking race cars! Fucking flaming tanuki balls! And lots more shit! Coming March 29th to PC and Mac. Pre order now on Steam and get 10% off and the soundtrack free. But right now, it's time for a death battle! So, yeah, as with most Death Battle videos, I'm not completely sure. I'm going to be rooting for Bayonetta since I know her more, though, from what we heard about Dante with all the stuff he could do and he also has, like, time slowdown powers. Yeah, this seems, this is definitely a very even match, and it could go either way. Like I said, I'll be cheering for Bayonetta, and pretty much I know that if Dante doesn't win, my brother-in-law's going to be pissed because he loves the D DMC series. But, yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, let's get Places for steel chairs, it looks like, instead of actual pews, okay? <laughs> the little doll. Another wandering lost soul, I see. Wow. 
Lost? Nah. I'm looking for something called a left eye. Care to give me a hand? Could be fun. <laughs> I see. But if you're looking for the left eye, that would either make you an angel... <laughs> And we were paying that to the sign. Ooh, new tile card. Or new thing. Cool. Finish. Yeah, that, I figured that wouldn't be. It, I don't think it'd be over that, that all quickly. That you got, sister? <laughs> ah, looks like you're more of a man than I thought. Come on. <laughs> no touching. <gasps> what? Haven't used this in a while. Still got it. <laughs> yeah, so with this witch time, this pretty much not a void. So, yeah, worried about her. You're a naughty boy hitting a girl like that. You need to be taught a lesson. Why is Bayonet's back like bronze? Is that like a rendering mistake or. Now, this is what I'm talking about. If you like that, you're gonna love this. Oh, Baba! Your breath stinks! Gamora, no! This is where we part ways, love. After you. Dante! Wait. What? What? Why is Trish here? Uh, that's outside now. Okay, John is also here. Okay, this outside uh, hope level for no Trish, reason. You missed. Oh, don't be a baby. Let's finish her off. John, Cereza, having some guy trouble? Not to worry. I've got this one handled. Wait, we're getting paid for this one, right? Come on. This is gonna hurt. Bye bye. That's the <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to think about this. Just sign outside help. At two on two. <laughs> Where did you get that outfit? A thrift store? You're one to talk. That color looks terrible on you. Uh, bitch! <laughs> Trish, wait! Best pay attention, boy. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, the, uh, the clock tower. Pretty 
Ah, oh, no. Madame Butterfly, this doesn't Don't kill Dante Banish, but... Bane is gonna lose. No, that's not possible. Be happy again. How come I never meet right, any nice girls? From Wolverine vs. Raiden. KO! Worst date And her sister being dragged to hell. Yeah, they even lost their friends. Mm. I think. What happened to Trish and John? Are they still fighting? Well, I'll show you how I think it went down in my new show, DBX. Oh, wait, what? Did, did you actually do analysis on your own? <laughs> Hell no! I'm just gonna make him fight. Ugh, you would. And what actually so, matters? Yeah, it's just true that Bayonetta's satellite throwing feet trumps any and all of Dante's physical displays of strength. However, Dante edges out in every other category. His arsenal matched and exceeded Bayonetta's blow for blow. Hell, even a giant demon like Madama Butterfly is nothing new to this demon slayer for hire. But most of all, Bayonetta didn't have many ways to actually kill him. I mean, the dude shrugs off mortal wounds every day like they were nothing more than bug bites. Both could take a bullet, but unlike Dante, when Bayonetta's stabbed, it hurts. That's why avoiding attacks was her specialty. But she could only dodge for so mm. long against somebody like Dante. Early in their careers, Dante and Virgil obliterated each and every raindrop within a 12-foot radius, briefly creating a completely open space in a rainstorm. Up to 30 raindrops can occupy a cubic foot on average, meaning they destroyed 108,000 raindrops in less than a second. Without any extra abilities or yeah. styles, even with Bayonetta's absurd reaction speed, Dante striking so much space in so little time far outclasses anything she has ever had to avoid. Even when she tried avoiding him, with which time Dante's Quicksilver even the playing field. Basically making it useless. It was just a matter of time before yeah. Bayonetta suffered the fatal blow. Well, you know what they say. Hair today, gone tomorrow. The winner is Dante. Oh, God. That's one of the worst puns he's done. <laughs> so, Next time on Death Battle. Uh, it's going to be both or just one. Let's see. Ooh. Looks like Bowser. Can't sue though if I find out. Gandalf, maybe? Hey everybody, I'm Chad, I play Boomstick. I'm Ben, I play Wiz, and oh, thank you for joining us for the premiere of Ooh. season three. We've got a ton of awesome oh. episodes planned for the rest of the season, for the rest of the year. Thank you for joining us. And thank you so much to Angry Video Game Nerd 2 Assimilation. It's actually our game who sponsored the episode, so it would really mean a lot if you click a link in the description and check out the game. If you dig it, you can pre-order it right now, get 10% off and a free soundtrack. And speaking of links, click that link over there to check out our new show, DBX. It's kind of like Death Battle with fights and everything, but there's no rules, no analysis, only bloodshed. And this time, you get to find out so what it's happened just one man melee. and John. Or for more shameless promotion, we have t-shirts. Look, they're sexy. We wear them. Oh, yes, they You are. can buy them by clicking the merchandise link. If you're an RT sponsor, you save 5%. Mm -hmm. Be sure to follow us on social media to find out who Bowser is going to be fighting. We have a lot to say. Yeah, we do. See you guys in the next one. So that was Dante vs. Bayonetta. <laughs> Good episode, though. The trust... Trish and uh, John Fane came out of nowhere and, I don't know, that almost feels like breaking the rule of outside sis, but uh, whatever, that, that's supposed to translate in the new show, which I'll watch to see if uh, if it's a, like, if it's a full thing, like, I'll, I'll just watch it, I'm not going to do a reaction to it because, well, uh, yeah, because if it's pretty much just one minute melee, you know. So, yeah, I don't really have much to say. 
Because of the banner loss, this is not a case I care that I liked more loss, but hey, I don't mind that much. I mean, here in the analysis, I was kind of nervous, like, yeah, and of course, second Madama Butterfly, yeah, like, I knew she was fucked, so. But next time, Bowser, I'm hoping it's Bowser versus Gandalf, because, you know, Battle of Nintendo's two biggest villains are not the biggest villains in all of uh, gaming, so. Yeah. Though, I guess we'll just have to wait and see who Bowser's fighting, so. Until next time.